In the previous lecture, we started studying about processes and we saw a brief introduction to process management. Now, in this lecture, we'll be studying about process state. Now, let us first try to understand what do we mean by process states and what can we understand by the states in which a process is. So, previously, we have studied that a program in execution is known as a process. So, as a process executes, it changes its state. And the state of a process is defined in part by the current activity of that process. So when a process is executing, it can change from one state to another. And the state of a process is defined by the current activity of that process. Which means that what is the process currently doing? What is the current activity of that process? That is what we mean by the state of that process. Now let us see what are the states that a process can be in. So each process may be in one of the following states. So we will be seeing what are the states in which a process can be in. So first of all, we have new. So if a process is in the new state, it means the process is being created. So when the process is being created, when the program is going to be in execution and the process is being created for performing a particular task, at that state or at that moment, we say that the process is in a new state. Now the second state is running state. So when instructions are being executed, at that moment we say that the process is in the running state. So when the process is being created, it is known as the new state. And then when the process begins its execution, that means when the instructions within the process are being executed, at that moment we say that the process is in the running state. Now there is another state known as the waiting state. So the process is waiting for some event to occur, such as an input-output completion or reception of a signal. So we say that a process is in the waiting state when it is waiting for some event to occur. So what can be the events? Some examples are I.O. completion, input-output completion. Some I.O. operation needs to be completed which are in high priority. So we need to wait for the I.O. operation to be completed. We means the process has to wait for the input output operation to complete or reception of a signal. So if the process is waiting for a signal to be received and it is waiting for that signal. So such are the cases that we can have. So in such cases when the process is waiting for some event to occur at that time we say that the process is in the waiting state. Then we have the ready state. Now let's see what is this. The process is waiting to be assigned to a processor. So when the process has been created, that means the process has already been created, the new state is already over and it is not yet running. All right. So after the process is created and before it starts running, the process has to be assigned to a processor so that it can start running or it can start its execution. So at that moment, we say that the process is in ready state. So the process is created and it is not yet running but it is ready. So at that moment we say that the process is in the ready state when it is waiting to be assigned to a processor so that it can begin or resume its execution. And then the last one is called the terminated state. So from the name itself you must have understood the process has finished execution. So when the process finishes its execution then we say that it is in the terminated state or the process has been terminated. So these are the states in which a process can be in. So basically these are the main states that we have and different books or different systems may use different words to denote these states but basically they all mean the same thing. Now let us look at a diagram of the process states and see how a process begins from the new states and reaches the terminated state. So here we have a diagram which shows the process states and here we have all the states that we have just studied before and let us see how does a process change from one state to another using this diagram. So first of all we have the new state. So here the process is being created. So when the process is being created it is there in this new state. So after the process is created it is admitted and it comes to the ready state. So what is the ready state? In the ready state the process is ready to begin execution and it is waiting to be assigned a processor so that it can begin its execution. So the process is created and it is admitted and it is ready over here. So in the ready state what can happen? The scheduler dispatches it to the 
processor and then when it begins its execution it is in the running state so when it is dispatched and when it receives a processor then it begins its execution and when it is executing or when the instructions in that process is being executed at that moment we say that it is in the running state now after coming to the running state there are three cases that can occur so the first case is it was running and it finished its execution and then it exits and goes to the terminated state that means there was no interruption in its running and it was properly executed and once it finishes its execution it exits and it goes to the terminated state all right now let's see what is the next case that can occur the next case that can occur is there can be an interrupt when the process was being executed so let's say that when this process was being executed some other process with high priority came and this process was interrupted so when it gets interrupted it goes back to the ready state again so it goes back to the ready state again and once the interrupt has been handled this process can again be dispatched and assigned a processor and it can begin its execution and go to the running state again so that is what happens if an interrupt is encountered when a process is being executed now the next case that can occur is when it is running it needs to wait for an input output operation or an event wait so let's say that this process needs some input output devices or some event to occur so at that time what happens it goes to the waiting state and in the waiting state which we already studied before what is it it is waiting for an input output or it is waiting for an event to occur so that process may need something like an input output or an event or something or it may need a signal from somewhere so until and unless that is completed it will stay in the waiting state over here and once the input output operation or the event that it was waiting for has been completed so what happens once the input output operation or event completion occurs it goes to the ready state again so it is ready to be executed again so it goes to the ready state again and the scheduler dispatch will take it to the running state again that means it will be assigned a processor and it will start running again so those are the states in which a process can be in so we see that the process it gets created it's in the new state then it comes to the ready state where it is ready to begin its execution and once it is ready it can go to the running state and in the running state if there is an interrupt that occurs so it will come back to the ready state until the interrupt has been handled and it will go back to the running state again and again in the running state if it has to wait for some input output operation or event to occur then it goes to the waiting state it waits for the event to occur and once the event has occurred or once the event has been completed it again goes back to the ready state where it is ready for execution again and then it comes to the running state after that and once the running or execution has been completed it exits and goes to the terminated state so this is how a process changes from one state to another depending upon different situations as we saw here so these are the states in which a process can be in so i hope this lecture about process states was clear to you thank you for watching and see you in the next one